We're now on question five. People feel a keen sense of bonding when they sing together. All right, so that sentence seems like it's grammatically correct. Let's see what the question says. Which choice most effectively establishes the main topic of the paragraph? Okay, I see. They either want us to say, okay, we could have no change and say this sentence is what we would keep as our topic sentence, or maybe we would replace it with one of these other options. Well, to, to figure out how we could establish the main topic of the paragraph, I guess we're, we're gonna have to read the paragraph. So I would actually probably come back to question five after reading, after going all the way through question nine. So let's see if we can do that in this video. Singing stimulates the right temporal lobe of the brain and releases endorphins. Endorphins blunt pain and engender feelings of pleasure. So this right over here, so for number six, to just kind of do a period and then do another sentence, it's not grammatically incorrect. I mean, it's fine to say that singing stimulates the right temporal lobe of the brain releases endorphins, that's a sentence. And then to say endorphins blunt pain and engender feelings of pleasure. But these two sentences are very connected. In fact, this, this second sentence right over here is giving us clarity on what endorphins are. So I would, I would think about I would think about kind of connecting them a little bit better. So let's see what, what the choices are, what the choices are here. So the first one is, well, they actually didn't put no change here. So we, they definitely want us to change it, I guess the way this is, this, this, the way this is written, written. So the first choice is singing stimulates the right temporal lobe of the brain and releases endorphins, which end up blunting and engender feelings of pleasure. Now that's not right. I mean, just even looking, saying end up blunting and engender. Those those two verbs aren't even in the in the in the same in the same tense. Blunting, blunting. Yeah, this is you know blunting and engender. Nope, it's not. It's it's breaking your parallel construction, so to speak. Endorphins, which blunt? Let's see. Singing stimula stimulates the right temporal lobe of the brain and releases endorphins, which blunt which blunt pain and engender feelings of pleasure. Yeah, that one could work, and it connects them better. Let's see, C, endorphins, but they blunt. No, you don't want to contradict it. We're just explaining which, what endorphins do. And this, this last choice, endorphins and they blunt. No, I think this is very clear when you say which blunt. You're clarifying what endorphins do, so I like B there. All right, let's keep going. So now we can go to question seven. So cortisol, a hormonal reaction to stress and the, the secretion of which the brain controls decreases after choir singing. All right, so cortisol is a stress hormone and it decreases after choir singing. Meanwhile, oxytocin, which the brain inter interprets as a feeling of emotional bonding is increased. So these are all describing ways that makes people feel better. And I want to read this entire paragraph because I at the end at the end I want to go back to question five and think about the topic sentence. So all of these good things are happening. In a study at Oxford Brookes University, researchers surveyed 375 people who either sang alone, sang in a choir, or participated in organized sports. Those who sang in choir reported the highest levels of happiness. So everything we're talking about is, wow, this choir singing really can make people happier. So, and they're kind of citing even, you know, chemical, you know, we can point to chemical things happening in the brain that are actually associated with more happiness and less stress. Due to its positive side effects, therapists have used choir singing as an element for those dealing with depression and chronic pain. So I kind of like the due to its positive side effects because that is the why, reason why the therapists would use it. But so let's just look at the let's look look at the other choice the other choices. So I like due to. I'm gonna, that's my default. So despite its positive side effects, therapists have used choir singing. No, I, I mean they're using it because of the side positive side effects. Due to the positive side effects. This isn't a contradiction to the fact that it has positive side effects. It's not you know if it was despite the fact that it's bad for people, therapists are using it. That would that would you know that would why that would be a reason to use the word despite. But no, that doesn't make sense. In addition to its positive side effects, therapists have used choir singing as an element for those dealing with depression and chronic pain. Well, it's not in addition. It's it's saying it's giving the causality because of, due to its positive side effects. This is why therapists are thinking about using it as a way to deal with depression and chronic pain. And then besides, once again, it's not a besides. The therapists have used choir singing 
that's because due to the positive side effects. It isn't on top of or you know another thing that's seemingly unrelated. So I definitely would go with no change. And let's go to question eight. And once again, this I'm using a prototype version where it says six out of five, seven out of five. Obviously, it should not be out of five because there's more than five questions here. But let's go to question eight. So due to its positive side effects, therapists have used choir singing as an element for those dealing with depression and chronic pain. An element feels a little weird. An element of what? Let's see what the other what what the what the other options are. An accessory for those dealing with depression and chronic pain. An accessory, I imagine, more of a bit of a you know, it wouldn't be a, a process like or choir singing. It wouldn't be an activity. I wouldn't call it a, an activity, an accessory, a a or a piece. I mean, I mean well, yeah, just, accessory doesn't feel doesn't feel right there. Let's see, choir singing as a supplement for those dealing with depression and chronic pain. A supplement could be good because, you know, you wouldn't make this the primary treatment if someone has severe depression or chronic pain. You wouldn't just say, "Hey, why don't you go go start in a choir? Go start singing in a choir." There's other things that the therapist would probably do uh, to to help alleviate or deal with the depression and chronic pain. But it would be a supplement above and beyond above and beyond what kind of the more traditional methods might be. This could be something to do on top of that. Now, an addendum. An addendum, once again, this is like something that you add on to other things, and so it kind of is like a supplement. But you know, I view an addendum to kind of a presentation at a you know, or 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 to a to a, a um, kind of a, a position paper or something, something I add on to the back of, of something like that, like a proposal. I don't I don't I wouldn't use that word if I'm talking about you know kind of treatment or dealing with with with, with something. And that's kind of how I feel about accessory. Accessory is something that kind of adds on, but I think of an accessory as more of like a watch or a purse or something, uh, not as much as a an element to, to kind of go above and beyond the, uh, the 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 existing treatment. I like I like the word supplement here, but let's keep going. A study from an arts and health research center in Canterbury, England, followed sorry, a study from an arts and health research center in Canterbury, England followed the progress of patients diagnosed with depression for a year after they joined a choir. 60% of patients reported improved mental health at the end of the year, and some were no longer experiencing suffering from clinical depression. So experiencing suffering, and that sounds weird. You, you, I would say we're no longer suffering from clinical depression maybe or no longer experiencing symptoms of clinical depression, but I wouldn't have experiencing and suffering there. I would get rid of one of them. But let's see what, what our options are. Were, so, and some were no longer reporting that they were suffering from clinical depression. I mean, that reads well. They, and some were no longer reporting that they were suffering from clinical depression, but it still feels a little bit heavy. You, you know, reporting that they were suffering, is that necessary? You could just say some were no longer suffering. Let's see this next one. And some were no longer suffering from clinical depression by the end of the year. Well, this one is tempting, but we already said at that at the end of the year at the end of that year and then to say by the end of the, that year again 60% of patients reported mental health at the end of that year and some were no longer suffering clini clinical depression by the end of that year you're saying by the end of that year twice that seems that's redundant if it just said suffering from clinical depression i actually wouldn't mind this choice Let's see. I hope D works out well. 60% <laughs> of patients reported improved mental health at the end of that year, and some were no longer clinically depressed. Yeah, that feels good. Nice and clean. Gets the point across. All right, so we've answered through nine, but we've got to remember we skipped five because five is about, well, what's, what's a good topic sentence for that, entire, for that entire paragraph? So everything they talked about up here, they're just talking about, hey, look, it makes people feel uh, feelings of pleasure, and they even see it in the endorphins. You feel less stressed. The, the stress hormone uh, gets uh, decreases. You feel feeling of emotional bonding goes up. And you know, then to give even more evidence, they say the researchers have even used it to, to help alleviate, to deal with depression and chronic pain. So let's see. These choices, singing in a choir can help prevent depression. 
Well, that's the second half of the paragraph does talk about that, but that's not the whole paragraph. The whole paragraph isn't just about depression. They are using depression as an example of how singing in a choir can make you feel better. So I, I wouldn't say that this is, is a topic. If this was a topic sentence, I don't know whether I would go as heavily on all of this other stuff here. I'd probably just start right over here. Let's see. The brain tends to respond favorably to group singing. Yeah, I think I think this is good. The brain tends to respond favorably to group singing. So that's, let's see how that reads. The brain tends to respond favorably to group singing. Singing stimulates the right temporal lobe of the brain and releases endorphins. Yeah, we're, we go straight into talking about the brain. Endorphins blunt pain and engender blunt pain and engender feelings of pleasure. So we're talking about all these ways that the brain reacts. And even when we're talking about depression, we're talking about how it helps uh, the brain uh, deal with these things. So yeah, I like. I like choice C there. So yeah, we've done all the way through question nine. So in the next video, we can do the, the last few questions.